Welcome to a special edition of the Spot Track Podcast, a contract breakdown edition. My name is Mike Gennetti. This is Dak Prescott's four year, $240 million extension with the Dallas Cowboys. Top of the market in basically every metric we're about to show you here over the next few minutes. There is a subsequent piece live on SpotTrack.com breaking down all of this in nerdy details with every fact, figure, ranking, and our thoughts going forward. This deal was negotiated by Todd France of Athletes First, one of the major agencies dealing with the NFL and really other sports as well. It's the second massive contract extension for Dak. If you remember just three years ago, four years, 160. He was the first $40 million player. He's now the first $60 million player in terms of average salary. We'll start with the terms. It's 240 in new money over the next four years, those new years. That's how we and the NFL and all the uh, outlets treat our NFL contracts, new years, new money. But in terms of total and totality, this is five years and $269 million. He had $29 million left on his previous contract that rolls into this new deal. There is a $5 million signing bonus that was previously paid out. We've turned that into retained money from the current co- from the previous contract. So it's five years, 269 still to be earned going forward. Even that with an adjusted AAV is in the 53s. It's an outstanding total value. And as they've done in Dallas, despite all of Jerry Jones' valiant efforts, they have kept things short and sweet, both with CeeDee Lamb and now with Dak Prescott's second massive contract to remain in Dallas through 2028. It's a $231 million guarantee. What does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, it's 231 out of the total 269, right? So it's not 231 out of just 240. That $29 million salary was not yet guaranteed. So that's new to the whole equation. If we talk about how this breaks down from a guarantee standpoint, which is really one of the most important feasible aspects to this, you can see the potential outline here. All right. This is how we get to the 231. And if we dip down to the notes a little bit, what you're going to see is 129 of this is fully locked in right now. That's an $80 million signing bonus, a minimum, basically a minimum salary this year at 1.25 million and a 47.75 salary for 2025. So all of the next two seasons are fully locked in as are pretty much standard with these big contracts. Now at 129, it sounds big. It sounds great. It's a good portion of the overall total guarantee. However, it's sixth in terms of active contracts right now and certainly overall contracts. We've got plenty of players, obviously Deshaun Watson at the 230 fully guaranteed at signing, but Burrow and Herbert and Lawrence and Lamar scored a little bit more up front. So that's a little bit of a win for Jerry. Uh, As you know, you've heard me say or others say, guarantee at signing has to go into the escrow right now. It's coming out of the owner's pocket right now and into escrow if it's not being paid out immediately to the player. That signing bonus of 80 million, easily the the most in NFL history, surpassing Jordan Love's $75 million just a few minutes ago. Jared Goff, also this offseason at 73, was the other highest signing bonus of all time. But Dak is now the leader in the clubhouse by $5 million. They'll see $86.25 million. In 2024, not a bad way to start your season. And uh, the cash flow gets pretty good from there. That's easily the best part of this contract. 86 and change this year. It's uh, 129 over the next two years. That's that full guarantee. And the three-year payout's 169, which is almost 14, 14 million more than Lamar Jackson, who was the previous breadwinner of that three-year cash payout. So it's... It's massive, it's front-loaded, it's balanced, it's it's everything you want in a historic, short and sweet quarterback contract extension. Let's talk a little bit more about how this thing's going to work on the cap, because this is where things get fun. You'll see this current 2024 cap at a 43.3. If we scroll down to where Dak was before this all happened, 55.1. And by the way, he started March at 59.1. They did a $5 million conversion just to get them through the draft class and things like that to some some degree. Um, So it was down to 55. That was going to be the largest cap hit in NFL history. He's now down into the 43-3 mark, 
which leaves Russell Wilson's $53 million dead cap hit, by the way, as the high mark all time. And of course, in 2024, sustainable for, for Dallas right now. It's less than 17% of this current cap, 255.4. Obviously, moving forward, things have to be manipulated pretty quickly here. Uh, this was built in as a massive payday in year one, 86 and change. And there's a nice, huge, big base salary sitting here that's going to be converted into a signing bonus probably as quickly as humanly possible. And I haven't seen the exact language of this contract, but I would bet that it's built right in there, that the language says we're going to convert this thing on a certain date in February or March and free ourselves up another $37 million of cap next year. So gaudy number right now to start with in 2025. That'll drop into the high 40s, low 50s, depending on how much they actually convert. And they'll be just fine. They'll be down in that, you know, 18% range pretty much throughout this contract. They'll do another conversion, most likely in 2026, though it's not required, all right, depending on where we think this cap is going. Certainly the uh, the revenue could keep things pushing pretty hard with that league salary cap. So that number is daunting, but maybe not as big as we uh, – as we're thinking about in two years, right? When things fast forward and, and the numbers sort of all line up where they might be. And then we get to 2027, which from a cash perspective, he's a $45 million payout. That gets into the 214. There's a $17 million guarantee in 2028, but this is the portion of the contract here, right? 2027, 2028, when everybody, as long as things are going well, everybody starts thinking about the third and final contract. And that could be 34, maybe going on 35 at that point in time. It's the perfect time to strike again. Lock in another four years, three of those years fully guaranteed, just like we did we did here. And that's most likely this the play out here, is he gets through at least this three for 169, most likely the four for 214. And then we punt on this sort of fluffy $55 million cash salary convert that into a portion of his next signing bonus, which is probably going to be in the hundred million mark. And we go from there. So even before we get through the first, the second contract, we're already talking about the third, uh, cause that's how this stuff works. There's always a line of demarcation. And for Dak after 2027 is easily that line again with the guarantees though, up front. If I, if I bring you the cash breakdown here, up front, it's all of 2024, including that $5 million bonus here. All of 2025, locked in right now. This $40 million salary locks in next March 16th. So one year early. This $45 million salary locks in the fifth league day of March 2026. And 17 million on 2028 locks in March of 2027. So every single salary on this contract has an early vesting trigger, including a portion of 2028. But like I said, if things are going swimmingly, all of 2028 probably gets ripped up and converted into an extension and Dallas goes from there. But this is about as good as it gets, all right? This is from a practical guarantee, it's the most ever, 231 surpassing Deshaun Watson's 230. That's not an accident. Again, the guarantee it's signed lacks a little bit, and quite frankly, the average salary lacks a little bit. If you've read my piece on SpotTrack.com, you've understood already that one of the angles and one of the metrics we're trying to really, really get out there to the, to the general public is the percent of the average salary based on the league salary cap at signing. So again, 255.4 is the league salary cap. Right now, that's $60 million that Dak just signed for accounts for 23.5% of it. That's third. Joe Burrow, his 55 million during that cap was 24.4. And Josh Allen, his 43 and change forever ago was actually 23.5% of that league salary cap. In order for Dak to have surpassed and reset this market, this AAV percentile market, it would have had to been a 62.5 million per year contract. Guess what? He doesn't care. <laughs> okay. It's a metric I'm starting to care about. And I think a lot of other people are starting to care about because it kind of tells a better picture than just the 60 million per year. But Dak just scored 231 fully guaranteed. All right. And he's going to see at least 214 of that before 
anything else has to happen, whether that's a buyout, whether that's an extension, uh, but we'll see in three, four seasons. It's rock solid. It's huge pay up front. It's fairly cap friendly this year. It will become cap friendly next year after the conversion. And there's going to be a ton of dead cap. You can see there's four void years built into this thing. That was built into the actual guts of the contract. Why? Because they're going to convert this salary with cap over five years. They're going to convert that salary with cap over five years. They're going to convert that probably over five years. And you're going to have a big pile of dead cap here. If they do a full conversion on that, that, and that, you're talking about 110 million sitting around here that has to get either eaten or rolled into the next iteration of the Dak Prescott extension. So they're playing with fire as most of these quarterback contracts are going to be. But when there's this much guaranteed and when it's this compressed, and that's a win for the player and agent, when the, when the contracts are this compressed, right? There's not an eight or 10 year breakdown here. The dead cap really compresses along with it and it forces a hand. And sometimes that hand is going to be taken on a huge chunk of dead cap to make the player go away, i.e. Russell Wilson, or forcing the hand to extend that contract as quickly as possible so that, A, you keep everything spread out, and B, there's not the need to have to give over on every single portion of a contract like we saw here. All right? Dallas waited to the very last moment, and Deck pulled every inch of juice out of that orange okay every inch of juice the signing bonus the one-year cash the two-year cash the three-year cash the average salary the practical guarantees and the structure all his win full no trade clause his win the ability to not be tagged after at the end of this contract his win that's what leverage will do with the nfl when you're a quarterback who can play the game at a high level that's exactly what players and agents want to see out of this contract. And it's exactly what Dak delivered again, right? This is version two. It's way bigger and better, but it's the same model. It's the same structure that he had three years ago on his four for 160 extension. That was at the final hour. In fact, they had to operate with a second franchise tag just to keep him from hitting free agency so that they could negotiate his four for 160. That's how far down the road they were with Dak not accepting his contract. It's a good play from the agent. It's a weird play from the team. But it could just be that Dak has been hedging his bets. And he refuses to say yes to any contract until it gets to this point so that every little piece of the puzzle works out in his favor. And that's certainly what we see here. So not every metric, right? The guaranteed at signing and the average salary percentile aren't exactly number one overall everything else is so if you thought this wasn't ha going to happen you were wrong <laughs> if you thought 60 million per year for deck was crazy you were wrong all right he continues with leverage with timing and with great play and i, I realize the playoff part of it i'm i'm not turning a blind eye to that but you don't have to do more than just a little bit more than average to get a big contract at this position right now, right? Trevor Lawrence has been just slightly better than average, and he just secured himself four years fully guaranteed from Jacksonville. So of course Dak was going to get that. He got it. He got it on with bigger numbers, with better cash flow, with much better structure, and uh, and it's a four and a half year guarantee. That's what Dak Prescott just got from the Dallas Cowboys. That's as good of a breakdown as I can give you right now. Obviously, it's an evolving piece. And, uh, and when 2025 gets here and they work on that, that salary cap conversion and things change, we'll do another breakdown, kind of showing you where things stand, as we've done with Deshaun Watson and a few of these other big contracts in the past. But uh, as expected, as advertised, this is rock solid, massive cash flow, decently structured cap hits for the Dallas Cowboys. But they will be uh, swallowing a pill, A, with the active cap hits and at some point with the voidable dead cap, especially if keeping him around after 2027 or 28 is not in the Dallas Cowboys plans. Plenty more to come. My name is Mike Gennetti, and this is the Spot Track Podcast.